Didi-didi-didi-rama. La 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 la. Shana. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to week nine of Drama with Shana. I hope you're all having a wonderful week. And let's start sitting crisscross applesauce pretzels with salt. All right, let's take a big breath in. Ready? And exhale out. Can you double the length of your breath and even bigger breath in? Ready? And exhale out. Last time. The longest breath in you can possibly take and the longest breath out. Ready? Nice. Okay. Let's do a big surprise. Tiny prune. Big surprise. Tiny prune. Chew some gum. And we're going to get started with a song you might remember. If you don't, we're going to review the lyrics. And the song is called Michael Finnegan. So I know you probably know, but if you don't, it goes like this. There was an old man named Michael Finnegan. He had whiskers on his chin again. Shaved them off, but they grew in again. But they grew in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan begin again. Awesome, you ready to sing it? Here we go, hands up in the air. Starting off slow. There was an old man named Michael Again. He had whiskers on his chin again, shaved them off, but they grew in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan, begin again. This time we're going to go a little bit faster, so take a big breath in. There was an old man named Michael Finnegan. He had whiskers on his chin again, shaved them off, but they grew in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan, begin again. This time as fast as you can possibly go. Ready? There was an old man named Michael Finnegan. He had whiskers on his chin again, shaved them off, but they grew in again. Poor old Michael Finnegan, begin again. <gasps> Silence! What? Keep your mouth shut. I'm sorry, who are you? My name is Miss Viola Swamp, and I am your new teacher. What? I thought I was the teacher. No, never mind that. I am your teacher now, and I have an assignment for you. What do you mean, an assignment for me? I'd like for you to read the book that was written about me. It's called Miss Nelson is Missing. Um, honestly, you kind of creep me out. I don't know if I want to read a book about you. Hey, Shayna. Um, <laughs> sorry about her. Uh, the book is also about me. Hey, I'm Miss Nelson. What she said. Now, stop dilly-dallying and read the book. It's honestly a really good book. I really enjoy the message. Okay, enough. Let's read it. Wow, how are you doing that? Transforming back into... Ah, ah, ah. All right, let's read it. Come on. Miss Nelson is Missing. Written by Harry Allard and illustrated by James Marshall. The kids in room 207 were misbehaving again. Spitballs stuck to the ceiling. Paper planes whizzed through the air. They were the worst behaved class in the whole school. Now settle down, said Miss Nelson in a sweet voice. But the class would not settle down. They whispered and giggled. <laughs> they squirmed and made faces. They were even rude during story hour. And they always refused to do their lessons. Something will have to be done, said Miss Nelson. The next morning, Miss Nelson did not come to school. Wow! yelled the kids. 
Now we can really act up. They began to make more spitballs and paper planes. Today, let's be just terrible, they said. Not so fast, hissed an unpleasant voice. A woman in an ugly black dress stood before them. I am your new teacher, Miss Viola Swamp. And she rapped the desk with her ruler. Where is Miss Nelson? Asked the kids. Never mind that, snapped Miss Swamp. Open those arithmetic books. Miss Nelson's kids did as they were told. They could see that Miss Swamp was a real witch. She meant business. Right away, she put them to work. And she loaded them down with homework. We'll have no story hour today, said Miss Swamp. Keep your mouths shut, said Miss Swamp. Sit perfectly still, said Miss Swamp. And if you misbehave, you'll be sorry, said Miss Swamp. The kids in room 207 had never worked so hard. Days went by, and there was no sign of Miss Nelson. The kids missed Miss Nelson. Maybe we should try to find her, they said. Some of them went to the police. Detective McSmog was assigned to the case. He listened to their story. He scratched his chin. Hmm, he said. Hmm. Ah, I think Miss Nelson is missing. Detective McSmog would not be much help. Other kids went to Miss Nelson's house. The shades were tightly drawn, and no one answered the door. In fact, the only person they did see was the wicked Miss Viola Swamp coming up the street. If she sees us, she'll give us more homework. They got away just in time. Maybe something terrible happened to Miss Nelson. Maybe she was gobbled up by a shark, said one of the kids. But that didn't seem likely. Maybe Miss Nelson went to Mars, said another kid. But that didn't seem likely either. I know, exclaimed one know-it-all. Maybe Miss Nelson's car was carried off by a swarm of angry butterflies. But that was the least likely of all. The kids in room 207 became very discouraged. It seemed that Miss Nelson was never coming back, and they would be stuck with Miss Viola Swamp forever. They heard footsteps in the hall. Here comes the witch, they whispered. Hello, children, someone said in a sweet voice. It 
was Miss Nelson. Did you miss me? She asked. We certainly did, cried all the kids. Where were you? That's my little secret, said Miss Nelson. How about a story hour? Oh, yes, cried the kids. Miss Nelson noticed that during story hour, no one was rude or silly. What brought about this lovely change? She asked. That's our little secret, said the kids. Back home, Miss Nelson took off her coat and hung it in the closet, right next to an ugly black dress. When it was time for bed, she sang a little song. La 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 la. <laughs> I'll never tell, she said to herself with a smile. P.S. Detective McSmog is working on a new case. He is now looking for Miss Viola Swamp. <laughs> Did you like the story? Oh, personally, I loved it. I knew you would love it. Now, I have another assignment. What? I thought that was the assignment. Part two of the assignment is teach the children at home how to make their own Miss Nelson Viola Swamp doll out of a spoon. You're made out of a spoon? That's what I said. All right. <laughs> okay, I'll teach them. I'll teach them. Let's go. So the first thing you'll need is a spoon. I used a big wooden spoon, but you can use any kind of spoon you have. A metal spoon, a plastic spoon, even a spatula would work. Next, get a piece of paper and something to draw with to outline the top of the spoon. Connect that bottom part, then fold the paper over and cut out both circles at the same time. These are your two faces, Miss Nelson and Miss Viola Swamp. I use the illustrations from the book as a reference to draw these faces, but feel free to invent your own look for the two characters. Next, grab the spoon and some tape and tape the faces on like this. So now you can create some hair by tracing the top of the spoon again, adding whatever kind of hair you want, and then coloring one side of the hair a different color. Then fit it to the spoon, use some tape again, and tape it down. I noticed there's a little gap, so I gave Miss Nelson a green little headband. And voila! A morphing Miss Nelson, Miss Viola Swamp Puppet is done. Excuse you, but what about my clothes? Oh, right. Sorry about that. So what you'll need is some fabric. I just used a dishcloth from the kitchen, uh, a rubber band, and if you want, some black tape, but that's optional. So I laid out the towel and put my spoon puppet right on it so that its neck was where it ends, and I just folded it over sort of like a little robe. And then I took my rubber band and put it around my puppet's head a bunch of times. There was some leftover rubber band, but that's okay. And now, just to make it look a little bit cleaner, I put that tape around the top of it to cover the rubber band. And now your puppet is ready to go. So if you have your spoon puppet ready to go, it's time to act it out. So grab some stuffed animals or dolls or toys or siblings, whatever you have to make the students in the classroom and feel free to act out the whole story or your own version of it. Here's a little example of mine. The kids in room 207 could tell that Miss Swamp meant business. Right away, she put them to work. 
we'll have no story hour today. Keep your mouth shut. Sit perfectly still. And if you misbehave, you'll be sorry. <laughs> I'm scared. Have so much fun acting this out, and I can't wait to see what you make. Feel free to send it to sstripe at friendsseminary.org. Bye! Please, be nice to them. All right, bye. Bye, everybody. See you next time.